All right, guys, let's learn how to play Alice's Restaurant, the quintessential holiday classic by Arlo Guthrie, uh, who's a great songwriter and a great musician, too. This is, I think, very close to how he plays it. There's maybe one little moment where I do something slightly different, but this is going to get you where you need to go. Um, first of all, I'm detuned uh, half step, so I'm capoed to the third step because that's, <clears throat> well, two reasons. One, my hands are kind of small, and this song is hard to play, and so I've capoed it a little bit. The other part is it lays a little nicer in my vocal range with the capo of the third fret. But since I'm down a uh, half step, if you are in standard tuning, you're going to need to put your capo on the fourth fret on the second fret yes on the second fret I'm sorry I did the math backwards there so um, first of all this kind of comes out of the the thumb and forefinger thing that I learned from Mississippi John Hurt not personally just through his records and uh, so you're gonna have to have a little bit of familiarity with that to get anywhere with this The song is pretty difficult um, well for me at least and uh, I could still stand to practice it a little bit more so it's played out of C and uh, it has uh, this kind of idea going on in it, right? And you can see that on uh, on the screen with the thumb and doing that in C. And I'm not going to name all the frets. You can see it. It just takes me too long to talk, and we've got a long ways to go. So the opening flick of the song is super useful, and you can use it to kick off like basically any song in C. Uh, it's, it's really fun, and uh, it has this heavily syncopated thing that is used throughout the song. Um, uh, and it comes in on the one and. So it's like... Like that. So you're going to start the... the uh, um, you're going to play those together. Got that? And this is kind of like the, the beginning of Blackbird. Right? Um... It's that same same little pattern. It's just it's syncopated a little bit more. Right? Okay, cool. We're gonna move along. Right off from the beginning of the song is the hardest part of the whole song. What's going on here is it's gonna go kick off, root, open string on the top here, and then. Uh, <clears throat> so what's boom? Ding, and then fourth, and then actually that moves down right there. That's what makes this so hard, is because you're gonna go. So the the bass notes. And then it goes to an A chord, a barred A chord, with the uh, mel the root note in the pinky as well. I think my hand's like slightly deformed or something, because I just, it's like really difficult to play that. But uh, <clears throat> nonetheless, we persevere. Okay, do we got that part? One more time. Let's do it one more time. Really slow. And you really want to try your best to try to get these strings to ring together. Um, that really dissonant sound is uh, part of the charm. So try go for that. So. And then we're going to go bar to the A, like I said. And then you're going to play. So the bass notes are going to go like this. Boom. You see that right there? Okay, one more time. then real quick you're using this This is another kind of tricky moment uh, you're using your pinky sort of as the plant the quick plant to set up the next chord which is a D7 in uh, this position very common position for like jazz stuff and um, ragtime uh, really useful chord shape if you don't know it um, so you're gonna but the challenge right here is you're gonna get to that real quick and you're, you're scooting your pinky out ahead of the game to give everybody else a sense of place um, so boom so and this is that shape Okay, 
So we're going to go back to the A chord. And then you're going to go right into a G chord, and the G is actually kind of easy this time around. Uh, you're just playing the, the your ring finger, and everything else is open right there. It's a G6 chord. You're just letting... In the, in the melody notes, it's this. So let's back up a little bit from the A. And then. And then you're, you nail that melody note first, and then your, your chord shape follows. So it's a. Uh, and then it does that riff again. Okay, so we're through the first uh, little bit of a phrase, so I'm going to play the whole thing, and uh, you can kind of see how it all fits together. Here we go. And then here's the riff, and then it goes back in, and it's a little bit of a variation, so let's charge ahead. Same. Just you're the you're coming in on the downbeat with the root of the chord, so and that's what's happening right there, which is kind of a little bit a little bit of a trick. I use my ring uh, my ring finger and my middle finger to do this. You might be able to get away with uh, your middle finger and your pointer finger, but um, I do a lot of playing all three fingers and stuff, and so I try to keep. Uh, my my fingers assigned as much as possible the pointer to the G the middle finger to the B and the ring finger to the E okay so here we go chord shape D D7 chord shape so that's that's just the kind of a Get so that you can play that. <laughs> Make sure you play that with a swing. Okay, cool. So easier said than done. And then uh, this is another kind of tricky moment, and I think this is a little uh, different than Arlo does. That I think he plays it straight, and I just go ahead and syncopate every single note because um, it sounds cool and it's fun and it's not too hard. So it's gonna go. doing there we're just playing this we're almost we're kind of playing a variation on the very the intro lick we're just putting a little passing chord in between um, and we're walking up to it chromatically so it's gonna be like this make sure you this fingering kind of important right here in your left hand so you, everybody doesn't knows where they're supposed to go so you um, open and then I use my 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 pinky so that my ring finger is available to play the C when it gets there. Okay, so now we're now we're into the third phrase. So we're just gonna play the first two phrases of the song. Here we go. Cool, you made it this far. You're almost done. You're almost done. You're halfway there. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, here's the next phrase, which is again different than the first two times, but kind of similarly related. I'm sure you'll recognize them as cousins. Okay. So here it goes. That's what I do. So you're doing that same thing. Boom. That's exactly the same as the very beginning of the song. And then you're not moving this middle finger down, you're just hanging out. So a lot of that's happening here. I'm using all three of these fingers right there. Can you see that 
here I'll make that make that more clear. Cool, huh? Sounds good. You're sounding great. You're sounding great. You're getting it. You're uh, persevering. I know you're you're gonna get this. You're gonna land it. So here we go. Uh, okay. And then uh, this is really fun to play. I think this is uh, maybe my favorite part of the song. And uh, it's not even very hard. So you're going to go. And you're playing an F right there. Closer. Uh, so you're going to, you're playing an F and I hammer it. So I hammer the whole thing. I hammer all, all four notes which sounds harder than I think it is. Um, I, this is a moment where you know you have to have this really great bad technique thing where you play your bass note with your thumb on the F string. Um, and you kind of need to do that this way in order to play it like this. So um, there's, I'm sure there's a workaround for those of you, some of you really would much prefer to play your F with the pointer finger. And uh, that's entirely acceptable. And you know that's the way Andre Segovia would do it. But um, here in Slackland, we'd play it this way. Um, so you're going to go, you're ham doing all the hammers on. And then uh, this is, the, you're pedaling back and forth between, um, on the octave of the F with, the, with your thumb. And you're, so you're going to go. Oh, sorry. Uh, you're letting go of your pointer first so you can play that in the melody. And then the other thing is I'm kind of like pushing in, I'm kind of pulsing with my left hand to get that to uh, be more of a staccato feel than run together. Sometimes you really want the notes to run together and sometimes you want to kind of put a little distance between them so they pop out a little better. So that's what I'm doing here. Right? And then you're going to slide your thumb up to, now we're going to play a D7 chord. Isn't that gross? Sounds so great. Right? So. And then D7. And I'm playing it like this. So I'm using my pointer, my two fingers here. And uh, playing the F sharp in the bass. You can play either with your pinky or your ring finger. Um, I think I do it different. I don't know what I do. I think I, play, I usually play my pinky. I most of the time use my pinky because my hand, it just feels a little easier. Um, but you can do your ring finger if you want to. So, uh, and then I do this little thing. Get this little thing going here. So. into the the sort of the beginning phrase a slightly modified first phrase so this, is, this should be familiar so uh, let me go back through um, there's a whole third phrase that open E string to mask my hand uh, moving underneath it so you as so long as you have no, one note ringing the music kind of keeps going and you can sneak around underneath that ring, one ringing note uh, that's why open strings are so useful in this style of guitar playing so uh, and then I play that C chord so you can hear kind of how that sounds see how nice that is it's cool uh -huh take my word for it. Okay. Uh, and it was same, same. Same. And this is different. 
instead of which in the first in the first phrase it's the G6 chord and in this phrase it's just a straight G with a with a melody in uh, the third fret and your the th third fret of the E string I can't remember how to describe things with my words okay and you can do that as a pull off too uh, that oftentimes pull offs just sound a little better and they're easier to play in a way. But for some reason, because of the punchiness and the staccato uh, syncopated nature of this, I usually play that, play both notes. Uh, I wish Arlo were here to tell us what to do, but we're on our own. Okay, so uh, that's the whole song right there. So here, I'm going to play the last, the fourth, fourth uh, phrase. Uh, as as one so uh isn't that cool and then it starts right over so i'll play the whole thing right here and i'm going to play it uh, a lot slower than i would normally hopefully i don't make any mistakes wish me luck You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Walk right in, it's around the back, just a half a mile from the railroad tracks. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. I hope that was helpful, and I hope that you get a little time uh, with yourself and your guitar, and you can work all of these notes out, and uh, pretty soon you're going to play it a lot better than me is my guess. I believe in you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching. Oh, be sure and like and subscribe. I'm getting better at this. <clears throat>